guys, welcome back for another episode of Free and Budget Campsites in New, New South Wales. This side again. For all new new viewers, my name is Peter and I'm road testing campsites, roadsides, anywhere I can leave my bus for a budget so I can save a bit of money and hopefully pass the information to you and show you great campsites like this. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up at the end of the video. Right now we're around 160 kilometer away from the rat race of Sydney at the moment. We're at a place called Portland. It's right in the between Bathurst and Lithgow. Well, it's not, yeah, sort of in between, yeah. It's just off the highway a little bit inland, but it's a free campsite, this one. And you can stay up to 72 hours. It's a great little site. It's got a dump site, playgrounds. It's got a skate park. It's got a few things to do around town, which I'm going to take you uh, eventually. I want to go and see the Glen museum so i thought i'd go around there and show you a bit of it too and also we're going to pop up the town today and have a look what is in the town where to shop what the town has got for you guys to restock or whatever but this is a really good campsite anyway let's not talk too much let's get in there and have a look at it let's get out of here sorry your call can't we're sorry the number you have dialed is not in service at this time phone reception right oh look the phone reception here not too bad Actually, I'm getting 4G and 3 bars at the moment. Right, I'm just about to do a speed test for you. And at the moment, I'm getting 65.5 megabits per second download, which is pretty good. You can stream everything here. And the upload speed is 31.5. What a great upload speed. And that's on 4G. So the actual phone reception here, fantastic. Oi, here he goes again, our little fuzzy friend. When you see our fuzzy friend hit me, there you go. Bye, bud. When you see our fuzzy friend, you know this place is dog friendly. But they do say, please keep your dog on a leash and pick up after your dog when they're finished with their... House time. These are like Arnold Schwarzenegger's toilets. These ones, man, these are like towards, towards 3,000. 3, you walk up there, it says, hi, how are you going? You push a button and it opens up. Music starts to play. It turns around and tells you, please shut the door, push this button. Now, I'm pretty impressed with these toilets. They're self-cleaning. They've got hand soap. They haven't got no paper towel. They've got a hand blower instead. Toilet papers or chockers, and if it runs out, push a button, more comes down. Now, out of five, they're getting a four and a half straight away. Mate, they've got everything, except paper towel. Sad to say, no paper towel. You just gotta go, you know how it is. Welcome back to the crappy part of the show, Glampers. It is the dump site here at Portland. It's on grass. If it gets wet around that area, you're going to get a bit of soggy feet. You'll probably have to position your vehicle if you've got a black water tank. But I have to actually reverse my van up between the toilet and the fence to actually dump my grey water or my black water. So just be aware of that when you do come in here. But for cassettes, dump away. Now it does have water here. Now you're probably going to go and go turn the tap on and go, oh, there's no tap fitting on it. But if you go back through the pipe, there is a cock valve. I know it's a bit rude, guys, but a cock valve. That's what I think it's called. So if you know what the valve's called, put it down there so I know not to say cock next time. Oops. You put it down and it turns that tap on there. I'm looking at that water right now. There's no sign on it, of course, but it is metered. I'm guessing it's town water. Look, if you want to fill up your van, fill it up at your own risk. There's no sign on it at the moment. Make sure you use a filter here. Treat it with caution. Woohoo! Now we're right in the middle of town at the moment. Look, there's not much around here. There is just an IGA where you can actually do some shopping. There's quite a few pubs around the place. It's not a large town, like I said before. It's only got a population of around two and a half thousand people, but it does whack a bit of a punch, especially with this stuff behind me. Now this concrete factory that actually was a part of these solos, it opened back in 1902 and it operated until 1991, close to 90 years of operation and few of the locals said this is the place that built Sydney. Now look, you can take that with a pinch of salt. Yes, it is a big concrete foundry. It put a lot of people through jobs all throughout Great Recessions, through World War I, World War II, and it kept on pumping the concrete out, which is a good thing. Just a bit of information about the actual 
solos of the foundries. Back in 2018, Guido Van Helton, he actually painted them. While they were painting them, people came around and had a look to see how he was painting them. And, and they actually made up twilight markets. Now the twilight markets are not on every weekend now, it's mainly on the long weekends. I will leave the website down below in the description where you can actually find out if you're coming to this site, if the markets are on in that time. But isn't it cool? Hey! I like it. You've seen where the big solo cows are. Now they do have a little bit of a jazz get together on some Fridays. Look, you'll have to keep an eye on the website when this is on. And a nice little bonfire you can sit around and listen to the jazz. Now that's a bit of a cool thing this town has. So do yourself a favor and pop down and have a look. I'll let you have a quick little bit of a listen. Fishing, wow. Seriously, around 100 metres away from the actual campsite itself, there is a stocked lake. Now, it is a part of the actual concrete foundry itself. They had the three lakes or the three big ponds like that. Now the place is shut down. They've actually turned one into a stocked lake. And apparently, rainbow trout of stock in that lake. Now, bad thing about it is, you can't use any live bait. You can't use any powered lures. You can only use lures or fly fishing, and that's about it. You can't actually use all the baits. Now, when you do come to here, there is a conditions of where you can fish and where you can't fish. So if you do want to come down here, fish, and in the green section around here, you can fish. Now, the rest of the actual lakes um, up further, they're not open, they're a part of the foundries, so they're not going to be open. Sad to say, you can't get any watercraft at all in there. They ask you not to go actually in the water itself. Do yourself a favor, when you come to that campsite, seriously, 100 meters away, bring your fishing rod down and a lure and throw it in and see what you can get. We're down in Portland's main street at the moment. Look, it's only a small donation of $5 when you walk in there. And this used to be the old hospital for the concrete foundries down the road. Now, this place has got a bit of history behind it. When you come here, there's a lot to see and a lot of old stuff. So do yourself a favor, come down. They are doing a couple of renos at the moment and they are making into a bit of a shop that you can buy some trinkets and some souvenirs for the town and it becomes an office. Look, all their information I'll leave on the screen throughout the show, so you've got no excuse. They're only open at the moment um, on the weekends, which is from 11 to 3 o'clock in the afternoon every weekend. But they are planning to open Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday very shortly. Righto, when you're in town uh, itself, just around the corner, there's a place called uh, Portland's Walnut Signs of Yesteryears. Now, it is a bit of a must to come and see this. Now, I was walking past, and I walked past this shop and seen the signs, and just went, wow! Seriously, come in and have a look. Now, all their information's on screen right now. They do have a website, so if you want to purchase anything, they do do all the posting and shipping for you guys, so just pick what you want. Now, if I did miss any information, please look in the description down below. Now, if you need anything made up, send him an email. He'll send you back with a proofread, of course, and then if you agree on it, he'll make it and ship it to you. Playground time for your kids to keep entertained. Now, you've got a pretty good playground behind me. Like I said, it's not undercover, so make sure you slip, slap, slop. And it's on soft ground, so if they do fall over, they're not going to come scream back up. You've also got a skate park right next to it. It's not in the same vicinity, you have to walk around to it, but it's a good little skate ramp. I'd have to say it's for an intermediate one, so it has got a fair bit of ramps, it's even got a rail, and they've also got some sitting areas for the parents to sit out and watch their kids hurt themselves. Hopefully they don't, whoops. Anyway, right next door to that, you've got a netball course and a sort of a tennis court, but it hasn't got a net, so it's up to you if you wanna just hit a ball. Now they've also got some cricket nets in at this site too so if you've got a cricket ball and a cricket bat bring your son have a bash 
they're laughing. Now, right beside that, they've got a, also a huge oval where you can have a game of soccer, game of cricket, game of touch football, whatever you want. Fly a kite if you want, but it is a great oval and beautiful lush grass. Campsites, hey? How cool are these? Look, most of these campsites are, are level. Look, that was my second park. I drove a little bit, found out my level was out. Drove a little bit more, found a sweet spot, stopped, parked, Bob's your uncle, turned the fridge on, and I'm laughing. Just remember to bring your chocks, just in case. Now, you've got two campsites. You've got the one that I'm in at the moment, which is pretty large. You can fit quite a few caravans in here. Now, if this is also full, don't turn around. You've got another campsite on the other side of this park there. Now, that's pretty large, too. It's not as large as this one, but they've got a fair few campsites around up that way. Now, up that way, there is a few trees that you can get a bit of shaded area, but in this area here, you're going to get heaps of solar. And everyone knows solar is fantastic. Yeah. Rodeo Clampers, if you liked the video of Portland, New South Wales RV camping area, give us a thumbs up, turn your notifications on, hit that subscribe button. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you on the road.